Aha! The third episode of Digital Asset is live. We are progressing and our content is evolving. You're welcome to the Internet Money Podcast, Digital Asset Show, and I am your host, Oluwa Shegun Ori Ofer Hosu Alaji, like my people call me, or Olu. You know, if you've met me on Spaces and Twitter Spaces, you hear Olu. Um, the Digital Assets Show is that show that takes you on a ride, exhilarating ride, like I like to say, of the ever, ever evolving blockchain landscape, fast evolving digital currency landscape. Uh, in the first episode, we spoke about what digital assets are. Second episode, we brought a writer here and he was able to paint a picture of Bitcoin, which is the number one digital asset on top of the food chain on the blockchain, like I like to say. Uh, but today, I have two special experts in their various fields, people that I like to uh, consume their content online. One is a mind coach, uh, a certified line and mindset coach, and a Forbes BLK member, an entrepreneur, a tech founder of Demo Hub. He's also a Bitcoin educator and, of, of course, just came back from the Africa Bitcoin Conference. Please give it up for my guy, Ayobami Atolagbi. Yeah. Hello, guys. Hope you guys are having fun and you're ready to get educated. Uh, I believe it's going to be an awesome one. Thank you very much for th this introduction. I don't need to introduce myself again. Uh, I believe we just ride on the, on the wave of that. And I believe you're ready to learn. Thank you so just much. Just hear the big man voice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the big man voice. Your voice, right? I'm talking about your, your voice, voice, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, far to the other end is my guy. He's a Nigerian, but of course doing exploits in the diaspora. Uh, you know, this is somebody that empowers other people, and I respect his work a lot. He's the CEO of Afri Axe. They do a lot of hackathons, and they give a lot of money out there for young people who are talented. Of course, Uchi uh, has a product called Chi Money. Uh, they've been doing a lot of integrations these days and, and they enable cross-border uh, remittances in ways that I'm sure only him can explain to you. Please welcome Uchi Uchi Beck, the founder of Afri Axe and of course the founder CEO of Chi Money, my guy. Thank you so much, Shagun, for having me. It's truly a privilege to be here. Hi, guys. <laughs> really happy to be here. First time on air. So super excited to share some tidbits and just have fun. Wow. Look at the way I'm looking at these two people. These are very wealthy people, but you don't know. Because you guys don't have Cuban chains on your neck. Set eh? up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go into it. So right. you're welcome to this podcast. Um, the goal behind the podcast is to educate. And I know you guys are educators. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start from your mind co uh, our mind coach here. Okay. Uh, for the purpose of the people that don't know you, I know you. Uh, can you give us a quick rundown of your bio data? All right, thank you very much. As I normally call you, Lami. Yeah. <laughs> right, you say Olu. <laughs> All right, um, in simple terms, my name is Ayobami, and um, I'm a certified life coach and a mindset coach as well. Uh, I'm the founder of Demo Hub, which is an ed tech, and also the, the chancellor of Diam Academy which certifies me as the, the mindset coach, which is focused on helping people build the right mindset for productivity in all spheres of life, right? Because I do say something, when you know better, you do better. Absolutely. Um, as an educator, uh, I'm the ambassador program manager for No Ones, and uh, I believe we're going to learn more about that as the show goes on. And uh, No Ones is a Bitcoin app, right? Yeah, it's a Bitcoin app. All right. Yeah. Um, is that the platform... That's Ray. Ray is a CEO. Of yeah, yeah. I think that not think that that was what uh, we tried to portray in Accra, Ghana. That was about some few days ago, and uh, we tried to push it out in a grand style. And by the way, I just got to know that Ghana was the first African country to gain independence, and. Oh, yeah. We, we, try to, we try to portray that in having to. But Nigeria is the giant of Africa. Even <laughs> though. <laughs> even, even, though <laughs> even though, as I'm saying, it's not giant. I feel some type of way, but. <laughs> but we are still giants, right? It's awesome. So, so we try to put it out there. So, Ghana is, is going to be the headquarter for, for No Ones. Oh, it's nice. already out there. So, I haven't, like, okay, Ghana got the first independence. Okay, we're going to talk about No Ones. No worries. But, but let me go to Uchi. And you guys will pay for that ad, right? You're going to pay for it. Yo, Ray. <laughs> 
Your mind coach is here and on a live television for the first time Bro, in we'll talk about of Nigeria. That. You guys gotta pay. You gotta pay me. Run me my check. Don't worry. I will do the right thing for you guys. All right, All right Uchi. Um, let me tell you one of the reasons why I respect your work. Oh, okay. Um, you know, how did we met, meet? We we met on productivity. Oh. Correct. And ever since you haven't stopped. I walked into that hackathon room and I saw by a hundred young people mm -hmm. writing software codes and I said, wow, this is a revolution. Before we dive into that, your bio data real quick because that's what I'm coming next. Amazing. So I'm um, Uchi. I always like to say Uchi as in Gucci. Oh. <laughs> I love um, that. <laughs> Why are you guys dropping codes? <laughs> I love that. And I'm the founder and CEO of Chimoney. So Chimoney is a global payment platform that makes it possible for anyone to pay anyone in the world using just their phone number or email. So Chimoney is used by Google, Microsoft, and other large enterprises across the world for global remittances. And like you mentioned, Lamy, I'm also the founder of Chimoney, of Africa Hacks, sorry. Yes. So Africa has, has a members across multiple African countries and we help young talent mm. to create innovation, get jobs, connect them to startup building, connect them to funding and things like that. Awesome. You know? So let's let's talk about that. How do you connect what you're doing at Africa Acts with Chi Money? Because I know Chi Money enables digital asset transactions a mm. lot. So do you want to tell us how Chi Money is changing um, digital assets cross-border remittance with digital assets <coughs> in Africa and how are you connecting that with the uh, products or the innovation or the skillmanship that is coming out of AfriAx? Awesome, that's a very good one. Like this, I'm saying this for the first time on air, but Chi Money was actually inspired by Africa Hacks. Ooh. So in 2018, when we did a hackathon, we had participants from across multiple African countries and it was just a pain to pay them, right? As you know, all countries, they have their own currencies, their own banking system, and mm -hmm. it's not really interoperable. Yes. So we're like, why don't we build something that connects all payment systems mm -hmm. with just email? And that's how Chimoney was inspired. Mm -hmm. And how Bitcoin fits into the picture is that we use a crypto digital assets as a way uh, to swap between multiple currencies and make uh, payments very, very seamless. So you can send payments to anyone using just their email. And then on our part, we're able to swap between one currency and allow users to settle uh, their payment in, say, Kenyan shillings, mm. in Ghanaian cities, awesome. in Naira, and things like that. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's are good. you taking the business away from the big banks in Nigeria? Or are you competing? <laughs> are you competing? How do they, do they accept you? How do they see you? Like mm. the, the financial institutions across Africa. When, yeah, you, when yeah. you tell them, oh, we would like to, do, I'm sure you probably will be doing business with some of them. 100%, yeah. So we see what we do as complementary to what the existing players and traditional finance have already done uh, because we realize that there's been a lot of work that has gone into creating the banking system of today. And there are so many smart and amazing people that have built what works today. And like you mentioned earlier before the show, regulations, compliance, and things like that are very, very important. important. So they protect yeah. consumers, they protect uh, uh, the system from fraud and things like that. And as stream money, we also want to work with the big players to ensure that uh, we're connecting traditional finance to the new payment system, Bitcoin. Awesome. Bitcoin, the new payment system. You're a mind coach. Um, you used to do <laughs> stuff with Paxful, right? Paxful. Yeah, sure. and, I, I, and just a few seconds ago, even before the show, we're talking about nouns, and now you mentioned nouns. Um, digital assets, Bitcoin, how has it affected Nigerians positively in general, whether the use cases, whether in terms of uh, um, remittances, um, whether it is in terms of elevating economic lives, is Bitcoin a scam? Can you please tell us from your own angle? Uh, I'm going to pick it up from, from your experience. Actually. Sure, I'm going to pick it up from from a story, not even a story, my personal experience and very close one. 
about four days ago, four five days ago. Uh, I was at the African Bitcoin Conference. And, awesome. And uh, a friend linked me up with a friend. I'm going to mention Mary Masson. All right. Shout out to her. And she linked me up to Jason. Oh, I know Mary. All right. <laughs> I know Mary. Yeah. Mary is my friend. Yeah. She, 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 so Mary um, is my friend. Very intelligent young lady. Very. Uh, we did stuff together. Satoshi's Journal. Shout out to Satoshi's Journal. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, those are the type of women I think we need in the ecosystem. But that's a story for another day. Please sure. go ahead. All right. So, so Mary was like, oh, I have a friend coming from, he has been traveling around, but he needs to get access to Nigeria. They have a project coming up in uh, Lagos, Ibadan. And okay, his name is Jason. And Jason reached out to me. Guess what was delaying um, the visa? Mm. Right? And we all know it can be limited at some points. Having to like, oh, you want to go on the internet and just Google what you think should be the normal process. Mm -hmm. Now, I told him the right process to take. And now this is the next thing. He needs to pay. Aha. Uh -huh. He needs That's to pay. Where the problem now, comes from. Now, this is the part. We're not saying that Bitcoin has gotten to the point whereby you can just say, okay, I'm going to pay with Bitcoin in Nigeria. Not yet. So we still have to like flow with the bank, right? So I told him, okay, do you know what's going to happen? I'm in Nigeria. I'm going to help you. And I'm going to send you my wallet address. This is the process. I, I connected to a friend, which is in the immigration. Okay, what are the process like? What are the things you need? And as transparent as we need to be, right? Every conversation I had with the immigrant, uh, immigration officer, yes. I screenshotted and I sent to him. So, like, I'm not keeping him in the in, in the dark, right? So you are transparent like I, the blockchain. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I needed to be, right? <laughs> so, okay, I'm not having a back, I'm not having a different conversation. I'm telling yeah. you different. So, yeah. this is how my conversation with the guy. So, I sent him all the screenshots. I'm like, okay, you need to pay some amount of money. And he made the payment to my wallet. I offered it into my bank account. I made the payment. For How him. did you do that? Because I know in, in Nigeria, the banks, there was a circular some time ago mm -hmm. uh, when the central bank government yeah, was the kind of in the bank being on the 5th of February that. As a Nigerian bank, you don't process transactions for crypto. Mm -hmm. I know cryptocurrency is not banned in Nigeria. Correct. It's, it's, not, banned. it's not banned. Pay yeah. attention. Mm -hmm. Is cryptocurrency banned? It's not, no, banned. It's not banned. It's not banned in Nigeria, but yeah. the banks don't, are not supposed to be doing transactions. Yeah. Sure. So how did you do the off-ramping from crypto to cash, from Bitcoin to cash? Yeah, that, that's the power of P2P, right? Wonderful. That's the power of P2P. And, and P2P is peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer, peer -peer, by the way. Peer-to-peer, -peer, right? And... Uh, no, okay. It's not, it's not a promotion, right? But that's the platform I use. So yeah. having to use no ones, and uh, it's like... Even if it's a promotion, <laughs> I, I know how to get my money from you and Ray. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So it's, it's more like people, people are ready, people are ready to, to, to really maximize that process. So I got the payment out. I made the payment for him. And this is a real life use cases, right? Use case, I mean. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I, under a few days, or I think under two days, something has been processing for like a week plus. And on that two days, it was it was made swift, and he, he got it. So currently, he's awesome. in Nigeria, travel to Ibadan, having to impact the world. So imagine what that would have limited Nigeria in having. And a lot of people would have started benefiting from his from presence that already. Here. Awesome. So that's it. That's beautiful. That's a wonderful story, and um, this is why we're here. Sure. You know, um, there is no way we would have a ten percent capital gain. Mm in our new finance act right signed by president bola mm -hmm. which means that every time you dispose of your bitcoin and other digital assets of course you would have to cut the government some slack mm -hmm. <laughs> so um what should the government do to actually enable this policy to make this policy even more attractive to the builders the founders, even to individuals who are doing businesses. I'm, and I'm asking you, Uchi. For sure, yeah, thanks for asking that. So there are different strategies that the government can explore to uh, benefit from all of the value that is being unlocked by Bitcoin and, and other digital assets, right? So like you mentioned, the new regulations allows 10% capital gain task. Yeah, and I mean, you're yeah. going to take 10% from me, but yeah. how do I do transactions mm -hmm. so you can take 10% from me? Yeah, and but we're saying that there's no, like, regulatory clarity. So instead of people to use the right channel, they are going, like, through the back door mm -hmm. or doing P2P. P2P is great and amazing, but potentially if there was regulatory clarity, we would see some users use apps that are more, like, user-friendly, and uh, existing apps that users already use would potentially integrate Bitcoin. And as, 
as soon as I sell their Bitcoin, the government also gains some funds. Especially yeah. now in yeah. the yeah. bullish season. Correct. Yeah. Have, so imagine Correct. the amount of money Nigerian government would mm -hmm. have made yeah. if, for example, when this law was enacted mm -hmm. in September, Bitcoin was probably like less than 30. 32. Yeah, maybe about. like about 30,000. And Correct. now it's 45,000. What's the price of Bitcoin today? What's well, let me announce price? to everybody publicly. <laughs> So you can know that it's not a joke. Today, I sat, uh, today is the 9th of December, 2023, 17 minutes past 6 p.m. Bitcoin price is $44,059 with a market cap of $862 billion, bigger than Nigeria <laughs> Stock Exchange. <laughs> bigger Ooh. than the entire stock exchange. What mm. are you buying on the stock mm. exchange mm. if Bitcoin is not there? Mm. Sure, sure. So yeah, it's a lot of money to be made by, I mean, the government, right? By Facts. providing clear regulations for innovators to build, right? The more clarity we have and the more uh, uh, use cases can be made. And also, uh, some, some governments start, start with like a sandbox. Mm. So more like a crypto sandbox Absolutely. that allows innovators to start building uh, Bitcoin and blockchain and their projects, awesome. right? So. I think it's an opportunity for us to really increase uh, adoption. Yeah, adoption and sure. also increase uh, revenue. Revenue yeah, mm -hmm. for the government. For the awesome, government. absolutely. Sure. I, I, I won't let that question just go um, uh, like that. Mm -hmm. He has answered it beautifully well. Without asking you, um, as a mind coach, um, how should people see Bitcoin now that the government of our nation wants to tax Bitcoin? And it's already in the laws. And if you don't pay, maybe somehow, some way, two, three years from now, you have not been paying and you have been, you have been doing transactions and you have been gaining and something wants to boomerang. Maybe the compliance guys, the, mm -hmm. the regulators come around and say, hey, you are owing us three years of 10, 10%. Mm -hmm. You've done transactions like 40 times in these two years. You owe us $75,000. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Now how do I pay that? <laughs> so well, what should, uh, uh, how should, me, an ordinary Nigerian out there see uh, Bitcoin and uh, how should they separate that thought process from fiat and or fiat that's the legacy yeah, of our country and that of others that's Naira and the rest of them how, how should they see it and this policy uh, for me I, I would say we should look into the aspect of now the government is coming in initially it was more like oh, the bank should not uh, be affiliated in some sense uh if it's going to give a better flow of your transaction and you don't have to look behind your head while you sleep or having to like lock your doors with multiple part lock when you sleep and you know that okay i'm trading good like nobody's coming back to knock on my door around 12 a.m and say that they are mm -mm -mm -mm. all right i'm not gonna mention that no you can mention <laughs> no, 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 it's okay so for me i would say it, it should be a full acceptance first of all it should be a welcome, uh, welcome proposal, uh, but most importantly, it should be in the aspect of as uh, the right infrastructure has been put in place, whereby I don't have to be stressed to, to say engage that, in it. To have to not say I have to go line up somewhere to say that I have to pay my tax. Yeah. Like they should just incorporate something. Most most importantly, get educated, not from the point of the people trading, but from the point of the government looking at all. all right. Get educated to understand how this thing flows on the back end of blockchain. And whereby maybe link me up with my NIN, link me up with my passport, link me up with my ID card, whereby with my BVN, everything can just move it seamlessly. Transaction is people are willing to pay, by the way. Yeah, so Correct. people should yeah. be people should be uh, seeing this government policy of yeah, you pay ten percent when, when you dispose as a plus. As a plus, and, and they should start seeing digital assets as something serious mm -hmm. to to buy. Sure. Because yeah. in our country now, there's crazy inflation, mm -hmm. right? Crazy and. and um, you know, what are you going to invest your money in? Mm -hmm. I want you guys to start thinking about that. We're going on a mm -hmm. quick break. When we come back, I have a guest from the diaspora. There's a diaspora guest um, who is a Bitcoin businessman and um, he's doing fantastically well. Uh, he's a Nigerian. Uh, he's currently in the UK. When we come back, I'll introduce him live to you. Uh, we're going to be meeting him virtually. I remain your humble host, Olu Washegun, and this is Digital Asset on Pop Central. Stick with me, do not go nowhere. We're going to be right back.